Hi, I'm Tim Song, a developer programs engineer on the Android DevRel team. In this video, we'll explore all about Jetpack, a suite of tools, libraries, and guidance to make high-quality Android development easier. We'll talk about Android X, the packaging name for Jetpack, and then take a tour of Sunflower, a gardening app illustrating Android development practices with Jetpack. What is Jetpack? Jetpack helps you accelerate development. The components are individually adoptable, but built to work together while taking advantage of Kotlin language features that make you more productive. It helps you eliminate boilerplate code. Android Jetpack manages tedious activities like background tasks, navigation, and lifecycle management so you can focus on what makes your app great. Finally, it helps you build high-quality, robust apps. Built around modern design practices, Android Jetpack components enable fewer crashes and less memory leaked with backwards compatibility baked in. It is the recommended way of creating Android apps. The Jetpack components are divided into four groups, foundation, architecture, behavior, and UI. The foundation components provide cross-cutting functionality like backwards compatibility, testing, and Kotlin language support. Architecture components help you design robust, testable apps. Components include Room, which helps you manage your database, Work Manager for scheduling background work, and Navigation, which helps you navigate between pages in your app. Behavior components help your app integrate with standard Android services like notifications, permissions, and sharing. Finally, the UI components provide widgets and helpers to make your app not only easy, but delightful to use. They also help you develop for other form factors such as auto, TV, and wearables. So that's a brief overview of Jetpack. Now, let's talk about how to use that in your app. For that, let's talk about Android X. Android X is the package name and namespace for Jetpack libraries. It fully replaces the support library, and just like the support library, Android X ships separately from the Android operating system and provides backwards compatibility across Android releases. Unlike the Android operating system, which is updated on a yearly basis, Jetpack libraries are updated on a roughly two-week cadence. Now, why should you use Android X? New feature development only happens on Android X, as the old support library is deprecated. If your app is still using the old support library, you'll need to migrate to Android X to use the Jetpack libraries. There are a few ways to migrate. In Android Studio, there is a Migrate to Android X tool to update the old support libraries to their new Android X versions. This tool works across your entire project, so you don't need to run it per module. We recommend using this method to migrate to Android X. If you're not using Android Studio or just prefer to script your migration, there are CSV files on our developer website that maps each support library to its new Android X equivalent library. Here are some tips for a smoother migration. First, make sure the dependencies you're using are compatible with Android X. Those libraries that don't yet support Android X will prevent your app from migrating to Android X. The best way to determine if a dependency is compatible is to migrate your project and check if there are any build errors. Additionally, if the dependency is open source, visit the project's page to check on its Android X compatibility status. Next, make sure your project is using support library 28 before starting the migration. If you're upgrading from support library 26, 27, or even an older version, the migration is much less likely to succeed. So upgrade in steps. First, from the older version of the support library to version 28, and then from version 28 to Android X. Support library version 28 is the last version of the support library and is a binary equivalent to Android X 1.0, thus minimizing the number of conflicts that can occur during migration. 
Finally, pause or at least slow down development during the migration. I know this is a rather big request, especially for larger development teams. The reason behind this is that the migration will change the majority of your files in your project, which can result in a lot of code conflicts with feature branches. Thus, if you're able to slow down development or work on a separate branch, the number of merge conflicts that the team will need to resolve will be greatly reduced. So now that we've explored what Jetpack is, let's see how it can be used in an app. For that, we'll talk about Sunflower and the inspiration behind the app, gardening. Gardening is a hobby of mine. It's very relaxing to spend time outdoors, enjoying the sights and smells of the flowers, and hear the busy bees. And with some patience, I can literally enjoy the fruits of my labor. But sometimes there are just too many plants for me to keep track of. And sometimes a pot of flowers that gets squirreled away is easily forgotten. Then later, I'd rediscover it, and it hasn't been watered for weeks. And because of that, I chose to make Sunflower, a gardening app, as a sample for this talk. Here are some goals that Sunflower aims to achieve. The app has a catalog of plants that the user can indicate is in their garden. The user can choose from those and add plants to the garden to keep track of, and the app can show when it was added. Finally, the app can keep track of watering schedules, letting the user know when each plant was last watered and when it needs watering next based on each plant's unique watering needs. An established fruit tree may only need water once a month, but a tomato plant in the middle of summer might need a daily dose of water. So let me introduce Android Sunflower, an open source gardening sample app illustrating Android development best practices with Jetpack. Let's take a quick tour of the app. When the user first launches the app, they're taken to the My Garden page, which is currently empty. There's a call to action for the user to tap on the Add Plant button. Tapping on that will open the plant list. These are a list of plants that are in the app's catalog and that the user can add to their garden. Let's tap on the plant to see more details. Here in the Plant Detail page, we can see the plant's name, description, watering needs, and a header image of the plant. There's also a Share button and a Floating Action button that, when tapped, will add the plant to your garden. A snack bar will briefly appear, confirming the addition. After adding a few more plants, the My Garden page will look something like this. Each plant card shows when it was added to your garden, along with when it was last watered. It also gives a reminder for each plant on when it next needs to be watered. The app has both a light and a dark theme. Recent versions of the Android operating system has a system-wide toggle between light and dark themes, allowing apps to switch themes based on this setting. Here's a quick overview of Sunflower's design. Sunflower is written entirely in Kotlin and takes advantage of Kotlin language features such as coroutines and Android KTX, Kotlin extensions for Jetpack libraries. It is written with the Model View View Model Architecture, or MVVM for short. Sunflower follows the principles of navigation, where many fragments are attached to a single activity. And finally, it is an open source project. Sunflower is one of Android's flagship open source samples and is hosted on GitHub and developed in the open. Sunflower uses several Jetpack components, but we'll focus on just a handful for the rest of this presentation. Room, Live Data, View Model, Data Binding, and Navigation. Now, let's take a look at some code. First, We'll need a way to represent our plant data, so let's create a Kotlin data class to capture this. The class provides the unique ID of the plant, its name and description, 
a watering interval for how often each plant needs to be watered, with a default of 7 days, and a nice URL for a picture of the plant. To persist this data, we have a few options. Android provides a variety of storage types in memory, shared preferences, on the file system, and in the database. For our needs, we want to use a database due to the need for structure around the data. For that, we'll use the Room Jetpack component, an abstraction layer over SQLite for more robust database access. We can add a few annotations so that the class can be used by a room. Adding the entity annotation tells room that this is a table with the name plants. We also indicate which column contains the primary key and the name of the associated column. If no column name is specified, room will use the variable name as the column name. To access and store data in the database, we'll use a DAO, a data access object. Here in the plant DAO, we have two methods that return plant data from the database and an insert method that stores data. Notice that each of the two get methods have an annotation that contains the SQL query. Now the insert method doesn't have a query as the insert annotation will generate the appropriate query depending on if the data is being inserted is a list of plants or a single plant. We do state that if there's a conflict on data insertion, the new data will replace the old data. The get methods also return live data objects, which we will cover later in this talk. Next, we'll extend the room database class to customize our database. Note the list of entities at the top which contains the plant class from earlier. Also in this file are a list of DAOs, including our plant DAO. This is the main entry point for the app to interact with the database. Now let's move up to the repository. The repository is the gateway between the data layer and the view model. In Sunflower, the repository uses a database, but this can be extended to use other sources, such as data from the network or the file system. A single repository can be used by multiple view models. For example, we have different view models for the plant list page and the plant details page, which would use the get plants and get plant methods respectively. The view model is another Jetpack component, providing the bridge between business logic and the UI. It's designed to store and manage UI-related data that is lifecycle aware. The view model class allows data to survive configuration changes, such as screen rotations. Live data is also a Jetpack component and is an observable data holder class that is lifecycle aware. It respects the lifecycle of other app components, such as activities, fragments, and services and only updates those components that are in an active lifecycle. Here, in our plant detail view model, we have a live data boolean called isPlanted that represents if a plant is added to our garden. We also have a live data that wraps a plant object to store the result from querying the database for a specific plant. Continuing up the stack, we now examine the plant detail fragment. Here, we get the plant detail view model and then use data binding to surface it to the UI. Data binding, another Jetpack component, lets you bind the layout UI to data sources using a declarative format rather than programmatically. Let's examine this further. Here's a screenshot of the plant details page. Let's focus on the plant's name and the floating action button. Here's a layout for the plant details page. And here, we define a data binding variable that is used in the rest of the layout. Let's return to the plant detail fragment where we fetch the plant detail view model. We'll use the data binding util class to inflate our layout and assign it to a variable. 
Since we want to use live data with data binding, we'll need to set a life cycle of the binding. In this case, it's the fragment itself. Finally, we set the bindings view model variable to the plant detail view model we fetched earlier. Let's go back to the plant detail layout file and examine the text view. Here, we're using the view model data binding variable, grabbing the plant from the view model, and then the plant's name to use as a text attribute. Thus, we're able to populate the text view without having to use find view by ID and then set text. Now, we have a slightly more complex example for the floating action button. We're also using the view model data binding variable as before, but this time we're using it with the binding adapter, passing in the isPlanted variable, which is a live data wrapped Boolean. Here's the binding adapter. Note the annotation that declares the binding adapter's name is used by the layout file. Inside this binding adapter, we define the logic for programmatically showing or hiding the floating action button. Thus, when the isPlanted variable changes after the plant is added to our garden, the floating action button is automatically hidden using this logic. This isn't just about moving code. A binding adapter can be used for other views, helping simplify your code base from duplicate code. We've now explored how data is surfaced from the database all the way to the UI. Next, let's explore how we navigate through our app. Let's recap on the pages of the Sunflower app. The main page uses a view pager with the garden and plant lists, and then there's a separate plant details page. Sunflower uses the view pager 2 and navigation jetpack components. View pager 2 provides the view paging needs and has advantages over the old view pager 1 library, such as built in right to left support and vertical orientation support. The navigation component helps provide a consistent API when navigating between destinations, whether they are fragments, activities, or other components. Now, let's examine the navigation component a bit more. Here's the layout file for the garden activity, the single activity in our app. In here, we declare a fragment and the navigation graph associated with it. Note that if there are multiple activities in an app, then each activity that's used with navigation will need its own navigation graph. Here's the navigation graph file with two fragments. Let's analyze the file piece by piece. First, we have the view pager fragment that houses the My Garden and Plant List pages. It has an ID of view pager fragment, which is also used as the start destination of the graph. The start destination indicates which fragment appears when the app is launched. The view pager fragment also has an action that defines a navigation direction. In this case, we can navigate from the view pager fragment to the plant detail fragment using a defined ID, action view pager to plant detail. Finally, the entry for the plant detail fragment includes an argument section which includes the plant ID as a string. Here's the adapter that's associated with our list of plants. We can use the navigation direction defined in the navigation graph and pass it the ID of the plant we're navigating to, and then assign all of this to a direction variable. Then we find the navigation controller and navigate to said direction. Since we define the plant ID as an argument, in your navigation graph, the build will throw an error if it's not included in the navigation direction. This provides better error checking that catches errors with navigation at compile time rather than at runtime when not using the Jetpack navigation. Finally, in the plant detail fragment, we're able to grab the plant ID from the list of arguments, which can then be passed down to the view model down to the repository, and then down to the DAO, which will then return a live data of the plant for use in the
the UI. That's a quick overview of Sunflower and how Jetpack components work together in an Android app. Now, this just scratches the surface of many of these components. So to learn more and dig deeper into specific Jetpack components, here are some online resources to help you out. Our developer site, d.android.com slash jetpack, contains guides, release notes, and API reference docs for our Jetpack components. All of the code used in this presentation is available in the Sunflower repository located at github.com slash android slash sunflower. Thank you for watching, and best of luck adding Jetpack to your Android app. Did you enjoy this video? Please click like. Subscribe to the Android Developers YouTube channel to learn more about Android development.